I, I managed to ruin my solar charge controller and I have to replace it. Okay, today's project is a new charge controller, solar charge controller. I went with this one, the Renogy, uh, it's supposed to be waterproof. And I'll get into that in a minute, why I got the waterproof. Uh, I had this box originally. Originally I had a charge controller, but I had it inside my old RV. I bought this waterproof box to house the charge controller. I have the solar panels coming in here, and then this was the connection to the battery itself that went to the controller. Unfortunately, the remnants of Hurricane Florence came through Tuesday, and for the first time ever, I left this door open. And inside, the charge controller got wet and fried some of the electronics inside. So now I have to put a new one in, which is no big deal. Uh, this was, um, I actually got this one on Amazon. I think it was about $54 with tax delivered. Got it in 36 hours. So it's a great deal. Um, hopefully this works out. I'm gonna open it up, take a look at it, and install it. I'm gonna. My plan is to install it on, hopefully the front of, well, the front of the battery box here. I got two 100 amp hour AGM batteries I just put in in May, this past May, four months ago. Um, I'm hoping to mount the charge controller on the front here. So I'm going to you know, look at the readout and make sure the battery's doing okay. All right, um, also these these uh, batteries, these boxes, for some reason, I can't figure out why, when it rains, they're filling with water. So what I'm going to do is open up, or take the batteries out um, and drill some holes in the bottom of the box. It's you know, at least let the water out. I don't think there's any risk of anything coming on the inside that's going to be any problem. I mean, the only thing that could come in would be more water and then it'll drain right out. So I think that'll be fine. And I'll check back in a minute. The first um, potential problem I see with this design is, is these are, I, I purchased 10 AWG wire gauge um, cables for solar, which is very common for an RV application because they're more efficient. The lower the uh, number of AWG, um, the more efficient the line is. So it's usually a good idea to go with, uh, for solar applications, nothing uh, smaller than a 12 gauge. I got 10, which is again very very common. Um, but these connectors that Renogy put on the back of the charge controller are really insufficient for 10 AWG. I'm having to, what I'm trying to do now is wrap these and put a, uh, with a pair of pliers, um, wind these together and then put a V into it. Um, so I can jam it in there and then tighten it down into the connector. But you can see here, hopefully, I'll try to make this less blurry. Um, you get a little bit of that fraying, which is potentially a problem going forward. Uh, if one of those wires came over and crossed over the, to the positive, for example, that would short out. Um, not, a, not really a good design. This should, should be going to more of like a uh, round tubular receptacle sufficient for at least 10 AWG. Um, so that's something they may want to improve for the future. But we'll give it a shot, see how it goes. Okay, I have the four wires attached. These are two for the battery, and these two on the right are for the solar panels. Um, I noticed when I was putting these together that I actually bought 12 AWG, coincidentally, for the solar panels. So you can see that's... Uh, those going fine while the tens have a problem. But I got these cut down and I think pretty well separated from each other. 
and I don't know if I mentioned this already but this is a waterproof charge controller and one of the things they give you is this Renogy gives you is this little silicone rubber cover to put over the connections when you're done to help keep that dry um, all you have to do you gotta remember uh, is to put the wires through this rubber connector before you actually attach those to the controller otherwise you won't be able to get that on um, but it, works, it seems to work pretty well on uh, the connections seem good I'm hopeful this is gonna work out fine I'll check back in again uh, I think closer to when I actually have this completely installed and I'll try to zoom in you can see here there's a they on that silicone rubber they tell you which connections are for the battery and which two are for the solar panel okay see you soon okay what Renogy was nice enough to do was give you these little bolts nuts and lock washers to hold the actual uh, to hold the charge controller onto the surface the mounting surface so again what I've done is I've decided to put on the front of the box um, I just ran the little bolts three of them so far through the holes I drilled pilot holes I ran that through and what I'll do next is just tighten down the solar charge controller right to the box. Well, everybody, it appears to be working. Um, thank God. It's kind of tight down here, but uh, everything seems to be fine. The meter seems to be working fine. The boxes are on. Well, hopefully it's uh, clear of sailing here on out, and hopefully this charge controller is actually waterproof. All right, take care. One final thing I'd like to mention is that the charge controller is a five-stage controller, um, having an equalization charge setting as one of the stages. An equalization charge, the way that works is that a 12-volt battery will be six cells, with a nominal two volts each. And those individual cells can get out of them, get into an imbalance where the voltage doesn't match between each, each of the cells. An equalization charge will apply a high voltage for a short period of time, which compensates and actually gets the all, all six cells within the battery at the same voltage, making the battery more efficient. I mean, obviously, if one cell isn't working to uh, optimum efficiency, you won't get the most out of that battery. So I'm very glad that this controller has that. Take care.